listen, I'm scared to death right now. I want to show this thing on Copilot because I get asked about it. It's four dollars an hour, uh, and if you run it, you know the the recommended monthly cost or the expected is twenty eight hundred dollars a month. I ain't have that, but I gotta show them. I gotta show them the 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 features. Take them on a Copilot tour. So I turned it on. I turned it on for this video. Steve Weiner here from GetRubix.com, and I'm gonna take you through this this Intune uh, co-pilot tour. I, I turn it on, I turn on the security co-pilot to show you Intune in my environment. And uh, it's billing right now at $4 an hour. So um, whatever, I'm gonna take you through it. There's some cool stuff in there. So uh, enjoy. The cheeseburger is my co-pilot. Get Rubik's, solving for the modern workplace. All right. Okay, so today we're going to look at Copilot in Intune, which is part of the security Copilot. I'm not going to go through how to set it up because you should do that yourself. I don't want to be responsible for folks going in, turning it on and forgetting to turn it off. We're just lucky that I turn it off after. But the whole idea is now when I come into Intune, you're going to see some additional things. And it's not everywhere yet. It's... uh. It's 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 getting there, and I know for some folks they say, well, what's the value of having it in there? Um, is it helpful? Where doesn't it work? Where does it work? So what I did is I spent some time with it, not a whole lot of time, and I want to show you the areas I thought it would be really useful in. So the first is if I go to Devices, Windows, Configuration Profiles. Uh, the thing for me that was really interesting is it's able to summarize some policies. So for example. Um, if I have device restrictions here, you see I have this summarized with copilot button. So I'm gonna click that, and now the little copilot preview thing pops out. And just so you know, that's how you're using it pretty much. You're looking for the copilot button within Intune. And it does take take a minute to generate, right? And this is still in preview, so it could be in preview for a while. Um so I might, depending on how, sometimes it takes pretty quick. I'll let this one run. And then for the rest of them, I might cut the time to get to where it actually spits out the response. Um, we'll see. I do want to show you the real time. Though. Okay, that wasn't too bad. So basically what I did is I came in here and I have this policy. And typically what we do is we go through and we got to look at the policy ourselves. And if they're in plain English, we can kind of understand. But, um, you know, essentially what this is doing is this comes in and uh, this is telling us what this policy is actually doing. Um, so the policy you're asking is new device restriction has a variety of settings configured, I'll summarize the key ones. And it did, it got two notifications on lock screen blocked. Um, it got the desktop and lock screen picture. Um, what I can do is I can also continue to talk about it. I could say, does this, Describe the impact of this policy on users, right? Um, and this is kind of interesting because now we're getting into some context. I would imagine this is a very valuable situation for someone who either didn't set up their own environment or um, they're asked to kind of just manage a new tenant. They come in and there's really no one there to summarize this for them. So having this within the context of even just the Intune platform, maybe without the business context, this is going to add... Uh, a lot of good information. Yeah, so see, it's going to say um, some potential ways this uh, will impact folks. And it does say, right, users will not be able to change their desktop or lock screen pictures as they're spe set to specific URLs. Um, and I think this is a good example. It's very important. Like, we set that, and I get the question all the time. Well, if I set this, what does this mean? Okay, I want to look at another one uh, that has some security impacts. This is BitLocker, and I'm going to make it summarize. All right, so with this one, because this is an endpoint protection profile, it's looking at all the settings available to it. Um, and it's given me pretty much everything. It's not honing in on BitLocker, even though it does say encrypt devices is, is true. So for something like this, um, I want to take it a step further. Instead of the user impact, I want to say describe the impact of this policy on security. Because, you know, this is, this is something that... I think happens a lot in the endpoint role. We set certain things for managing the device or settings, but when asked about it, uh, there are times when it's hard to articulate what the impact is on a certain setting um, from the perspective of like InfoSec. 
So in this case, now it's going to give me kind of the highlights of the biggest impacts to security within the policy. So it's calling out things like, um, well, here, BitLocker encryption, obviously, is a big one, and that kind of breaks it down for me. It's also going to go through some of the important things. And what's interesting here is these are things I might not have known about, right? Packet queuing, you know, what's the deal with that? Oh, well, this could impact network performance. Oh, interesting. Okay. Uh, LAN authentication, right? That's an important one. Um, so it kind of just breaks it down and gives us some high level and then we can continue to drill and they're also going to cite the sources. So if we want to read more clearly, we could just go click here and, you know, drill into it. Um, so it's nice that it's giving us that in context. So jumping to another area, I want to take a look at device compliance. Um, this I found kind of interesting, right? So what I did was I wanted to create a compliance policy so let's say windows 10 create test we want to actually create it um and i get questions and this is a thing whether you're doing configuration or compliance you can kind of hover over copilot for each little area so i wanted to pick something a little more you know not so straightforward so custom compliance i wanted to see how it did if i ran the copilot prompt on tell me about custom compliance right because that's an area that is a little bit complicated I want to see just how in the weeds it would get as opposed to just throwing me a Microsoft link. All right, and this was the part I was pretty surprised at. Um, it, it broke it down pretty well, right? It gave me some steps to use the feature. You need to prepare a JSON file. Um, kind of explain how it used that, how it used detection. But to take it a step further, I want to say, okay, well, what would what does it mean by select your discovery script? Because this is just a field where I have to enter the script, right? Where I'm responsible for writing the script. So I want to see if it would be helpful in this context. So this is, I was pretty impressed, right? So they're telling me select the discovery script setting in Intune. They're telling me the idea of it. It wants me to use PowerShell script, but then it goes ahead and gives me a little example I could use, right? Um, which is pretty cool, right? And I can copy and paste that. And it kind of explains it, what's it's doing. It gives me some parameters. It can't be larger than a megabyte. Scripts have a limited runtime. So I thought this was really, really helpful, right? Um, and just kind of going through and getting more than just explanations, kind of, you know, giving me some, some walkthrough kind of content, right? All right, shifting gears to endpoint security. One area I want to show you um, in endpoint privilege management. Um, yeah. So this is something I know I'm trying to think of situations where folks are going to have questions creating a policy. So when I go through to create a new rules policy, let's say I want to create a rule for, you know, uh, let's say I want to do a rule for opening Google Chrome um, and we got to edit the instance. And we've done this before, then point privilege management. But this is kind of nice because it walks you through a few different things. So when we get to file information, I think this is where it gets tricky. So file path, you know, I want to know what that gives me. So again, it's explaining the parameters of the file path rule, uh, you know, how I set the policy using it, um, giving me a lot of context. Same thing with uh, file hash. I wanted to see if it would do the same thing. Okay, so this was pretty helpful. It basically explained the file hash, um, telling me where it's required for automatic rules. Um, and then it kind of points me in the direction for getting the hash through these links. So um, that was pretty good. Now, just to kind of, instead of, you know, creating these policies, I'm going to use my Visual Studio elevation rule. I just want to show you what it's like now. I'm going to have Copilot summarize this elevation rule for me. So again, looking at a privilege policy, uh, going in, I could go through the settings, see what's been configured here. And, you know, it's one thing to look at everything here. It's another to determine what it means. So let's see if Copilot can do it. All right, so this, uh, I wasn't expecting it to be this good. Um, so basically it's giving me the elevation rule name, telling me it's assigned to this group. No devices or groups are excluded. In terms of risk analysis, this policy is designed to elevate the Visual Studio Code application, allowing to run a higher privilege. This could potentially introduce security risks if elevated. So, it, I mean, that's pretty cool, right? Um, 
Okay, the last area I want to touch on was just devices in general. Um, I'm going to click on this device. And, you know, again, when we look at devices, we can kind of just go through each setting, take a look at it. But if we click Explore with Copilot, we get this really cool prompt. We can tell it to summarize this device. So I thought this was pretty cool, right? So it's given me some high level information, the laptop, right? Last sync time. Um, I could see the OS version. Nothing you can't see in here, but it's kind of all in one place, right? It's encrypted. The device is a member of the following group. So it just kind of pulls out those groups, which is really nice. And then, um, you know, I could go into, it'll take me to specific details and other areas of the portal. Um, let's go back up though, and let's choose a different um, prompt. Show uh, policies assigned to this device. What types of policies do I want it to show? Uh, let's show configuration profiles. So now we're in this kind of interactive chat with Intune, as opposed to just looking around for things. All right, so let's take a look here. The device has 28 distinct configuration policies. Here's a summary. Uh, 15 succeeded at the system level, nine at the user level, one error unknown. To be the details, please use the link provided in the function output. Where's the function output? Uh... Oh, and it's kind of given me um, a policy, an example of what the statuses mean. Um, so that's cool. Okay, and if it, okay, and if I want to, it'll take me here and it'll bring me to that device where I can see the policy details. Okay, cool. Uh, show apps on this device. Let's do that. Um, I want to do discovered apps and I could search for something, but I'm just going to hit submit just to see what it comes back with. Okay. I thought this was re a really well uh, rendered, um, thing here. Um, so it's basically saying, oh, sorry. Uh, it found 75 apps and it's giving me details for 20 of them. I'm not sure how it decides which 20, but I could see the version and I could see what's on there. Um, to view other apps, please use the link provided in the function output. All right, that didn't render, that didn't render. So I'd be curious to look into more of that. And let's see if there's anything else we missed on the Explore with Copilot, policies, primary user, show apps. Compare this device with another device. Interesting. Enter the device name. Um, Okay, I'm going to compare this with Rubix-2045. Oh, and what's the comparison type? Uh, let's do configuration policies. That's pretty interesting. I didn't see this in the prep when I walked through making this, so I'm kind of curious now what this is going to look like. Okay, so the comparison of configuration profiles between the two devices reveals both have the same 28 configuration profiles. There are no differences in those profiles. It means that zero differences. It's important to note the comparison is based on the uniqueness. In summary, both devices have identical configuration profiles. I could see that being pretty helpful if we have a uh, working device versus a non-working device and we need to assess it for some reason. So that's something I might, you know, look into further. So. Well, there you go. I got to go check my Azure consumption to see what they got me with. Now, the reason I did this is because I knew for the hour or two of filming, I did the one compute unit. It's, it's $4 an hour times two is eight, whatever. Even if I spent, you know, a few dollars to get this going, it was worth looking at. Um, not going to get into the cost of the whole the monthly thing if it's worth it. I know it's expensive, but expensive is a subjective term. What I want to talk about is what we just experienced, right? Um, if we're new to Intune or new to a specific environment, I can see this coming in handy when we need to evaluate things very quickly. I think eventually, this is in preview, I think it's going to grow. I could definitely see a scenario in the future where there's a big co-pilot button on the front of Intune and you can just say, hey, summarize this tenant for me. You could say, yeah, you got this many Windows devices. These are compliant. You got this many iOS. You have Apple Business Manager, whatever the case is. Um, I could see this being helpful with this level of detail. I could also see it being helpful for those who are managing Intune, right? We're not super uh, novices at it, but maybe we are asked to configure things 
that we don't have experience with yet. And yes, you know, it's always good to work with a partner or a consultant, but if you're just looking for answers in that specific context, you have it right here. So I see a lot of cool things with this. I'm excited to see how it grows. If you have questions, let me know. That's what the Discord is for, and we'll be seeing you.